my quilty friends in today's video I'm going to show you how to make the Virginia Real quilt block now it's part of my mystery block of the month series and if you don't know what that is or you'd like to find out more and join us I'll put a link down below so you can check it out but for now let me show you how to make this block you can find a copy of these cutting instructions over on my website I'll put a link in the description below on the wrong side of all our C pieces we're going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner so I'm just going to take my roller line it up on the top corner, line it up at the bottom, check it's still lined up and then I'm just going to take my washable marker and draw my lines and I will repeat this for all of my C pieces. So now I've got my B piece with the right side facing me, I'm going to take one of my C pieces and place it right sides together, line up all these edges, and I want my line starting in the top left hand corner coming down to the right hand corner. Then I'm gonna take another C piece and place that down in the bottom right hand corner, again lining up all those edges with my line coming down. And then what I want to happen with that line is for it to make one continuous line because we're going to use that as our sewing guide. So once I'm happy that everything's lined up, my edges and my line, I will pop a few pins in, just to keep it in place and I'm going to pop them on the sides here because we need to sew along each side of that line this way they won't get in the way okay let's sew so I've got my quarter inch foot on here and I'm lining that up against my line to get my quarter inch seam allowance I'm stitching at stitch length 2 and I'm using wonderful confetti thread. I'm just going to start on the very edge and sew along till the bottom edge. Now when you come to this overlap, do make sure that it's sewn down in the correct position. If you wanted to, you could lift this top, this first piece over so it's on top. It will sit a little bit nicer when we sew over it. Coming off the very edge, cutting our thread, and now I'm just going to turn around and come down the other side of that drawn line, just like we did. Cutting my thread again, now we can remove our pins, and if you'd like to, you could press it just so it's sitting a little bit nicer, but that's optional. So now we're going to cut along our drawn line, so I'm just going to line up my ruler and then when I'm happy that it's lined up nicely, I'm just going to cut and then we have our two pieces. So now we're going to set our stitches, which just helps our stitches set into the fabric, making them stronger and our blocks lay flatter. Then we're going to press our seams towards our C fabric, so just finger pressing. And I'll repeat that for our second piece. Okay, so now I've got one of my pieces and I'm placing it so it's coming down into a heart shape and facing me. And then I'm going to take one of my C pieces and pop it in this bottom corner here so that my line's coming down through the center and to the point. I'm going to line up the edges and when I'm happy I'm going to pop a couple more pins in to keep it in place. And then we're going to sew down both sides of the line again. So all the settings are still the same and I'm just going to sew down both sides of that drawn line. thread removing those pins and again if you want to just giving that a quick press so once again we're going to cut along that drawn line so just placing my ruler along it and then cutting and now we have our two pieces let's press so setting our stitches again and then finger pressing towards our C fabric making sure there's no creases in there and pressing and then repeating that for this set.
and then repeat this for your second set so you have four flying geese in total. So now we need to trim our four flying geese so they measure three and a half inches by six and a half inches and I've got a ruler that's perfect for that. It's a creative grids ruler and it's got the diagonal line that sits right on top of the seams and then I know it's absolutely perfect and then I just have to trim all four sides. Now if you don't have one of these rulers and you'd like one I'll put a link down below for you but you can also check out my video where I did the variable star block that also had flying geese and I show you how to trim it up with a regular ruler. But for now I'm just going to use this one. Make sure it's lined up on all my seam lines and make sure your ruler fits within your block. And then I'm just going to trim all four sides. It's just super easy. I'll repeat that for the remaining three blocks. So now we need to make four more flying geese with our remaining C and D pieces and I'm just going to do all the steps that we previously did. So now we have eight flying geese in total, four in one colorway and four in the other colorway. Now we're going to sew them into sets of two in their colorways. So I'm going to take these two and we want to make sure the geese are facing in the same direction. So we're going to face them always to our right, pointing towards our right. Then I'll just face them right sides together, line up these edges, pin and sew. So I'll do the same for this set, making sure they're pointing this way. And the same for the remaining four flying geese. Now all we're going to do is just sew along that edge on all four sets. So when you are sewing your flying geese just be careful we've got this intersection here and we want to make sure our stitches are on this side of the intersection rather than this side because if they are on this side you will cut the points off your flying geese. So as I'm coming up to it I just carefully check that and that looks good to me. can open it up and check and that's perfect and remember if it's not perfect you can unpick your stitches and try again otherwise just think can I live with it and if you can move on because a finished quilt is a perfect quilt so I'll repeat that for the remaining three sets all four sets we'll set the stitches again and then I'm going to press the seams away from the flying geese point there so finger pressing and pressing and doing that for all of our sets So now with our four pieces we're going to place them so they match our image above and depending on which way your swallows are facing that's the name of the block and we're doing the Virginia Reel block so just double check how they are placed so we've got these geese pointing up and down and these each to the side so when you're happy that you've got them facing the correct position what we're going to do is sew each of the rows together so row one and two so I'm just going to place them right sides together, line up those edges and pin. And then I'll sew and then I'll repeat that for our second row. If you're enjoying this video, please do subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss out on another video. It really helps me out and I appreciate it so much. And now let's press. So setting our stitches and then pressing towards the flying geese, the, so the whole flying geese rather than these two flying geese just because there's less seams. 
and then repeating that for our second piece. Now we're going to sew them together. So just checking that we've got our rows in the correct position. Again, I'm just going to place them right sides together. And then we've got one seam in the middle to nest, where one seam is folded over coming this way, one seam is folded over coming this way. I'm going to push them up against each other, open it up and check I'm getting a nice straight line. And when I'm happy, I'll pop a pin in. And then I do like to pin at the beginning and the end. Making sure that our edges are all lined up nicely. And if you'd like to, you can pop a pin in in the middle as well. And then we're just going to sew. Now let's give it one last press setting the stitches and then I'm going to press those seams I'm going to press mine open but it really is a personal preference press yours however you like it can be a little bit fiddly pressing them open okay and then I do just like to check that I haven't accidentally pressed any seams the wrong way when I've done that and I'm going to turn it over and give it a once over and isn't that lovely that's our virginia real quilt block i love it let me know in the comments what you think of this block i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did and if you're looking for another block to make i'll put a link up above for the hourglass quilt block that's what we made last month for our mystery block of the month series thanks so much and i'll see you in the next video